Well, good afternoon. Um, welcome, and thank you so much for coming. I'm Vernon Ellis, and I've got the great privilege of being the chair of the trustees of the Leeds International Piano Competition. And um, it's wonderful to see so many here to hear about the next stage of this terrific uh, competition. We are founded, of course, by Dame Fanny Waterman 55 years ago. And um, just reflect on that number for a moment, it's an astonishing number. And of course, for all that time, Dame Fanny was the competition. Um, she was chair of a jury, chair of the trustees, artistic director, chief executive, um, and it's a sort of mark of her huge energy and contribution um, that when she retired, um, aged 95, 96, and passing on the baton, um, she's been replaced by not one person, not two persons, not three persons, but by four persons. Um, and uh, that sort of sums it up, really. Um, and I'm delighted that she's with us here in the front row in part of a very busy schedule. She had to get a train at six o'clock yesterday morning um, to come down to London to receive a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Woman of the Year Awards Foundation yesterday. Uh, a tremendous honor and, and a significant recognition of her contribution over all that time in, in the, the field of a competition, but also many other contributions to musical life in this country uh, as well. And that followed a weekend of music in Deeds. Um, Anna Sivalova, um, the winner of the 2015 competition, uh, played um, in Leeds Town Hall, Chopin II, uh, evidently marvelously on Saturday night, and then I heard her uh, with Dame Fanny um, play in a private recital on Sunday night, uh, a mixture of pieces, including two, which will um, be playing later on this afternoon, and I was completely blown away. I think we were all blown away by her astonishing um, um, playing, and it sets quite a, a, a mark for us, I think. But the challenge we have, of course, for new team, is how do we build on this great legacy? How do we provide yet more benefits, yet more um, esteem and prestige to the winners? Um, how do we reach out into the communities, the communities in Leeds, in Yorkshire, in the UK, and indeed globally, digitally and physically? And to explain on that and build on the vision for the next competition and beyond, I'm going to hand over now to our co-artistic directors, Paul Lewis and Adam Gatehouse. So when Adam and I first started to discuss how we might develop the Leeds competition, we both agreed that we wanted to redefine what a music competition could give to young performers as well as audiences. Our aim is to create an environment in which participants feel they can be heard for the musician they are, and an atmosphere that's more like a festival than a competition, which includes associated events such as masterclasses and talks. You can take technical brilliance for granted at competitions these days. We want a better way to find and nurture the really interesting musical thinkers and communicators. In thinking this through, we agreed on a few fundamental things. We want the competition to be as outward-facing and accessible as possible, both to young performers and audiences. We want to reach out to as wide an audience as possible, embracing all that digital technology has to offer. We want to make the competition experience as enjoyable and welcoming to the participants as we possibly can. We want the prize to be a meaningful one to the winners in terms of career development, and we want to offer an unrivaled post-competition package to our prized winners. We want to extend and enhance the competition experience for participants and audiences through other activities, both during and between the competitions. We want a jury that is truly international and performer-led. We want to have a focused and inspiring learning and participation program that would embrace not only Leeds and the wider Yorkshire area, but also stretch out nationwide and even internationally. When I was starting out on my career, the idea of competitions was not something which filled me with joy. Um, 
honestly. I never enjoyed the experience. Um, competitions were basically something you just had to tough out and get through. Both Adam and I are agreed that competitions are not the only way that a young performer can build a career. And so everything that we've planned has been with a central principle in mind, that this should be a rounded and enriching experience for all who enter, whether they are among the winners or not. So, how do we actually propose to put those fundamentals into practice? In order to make the leads more outward facing, for the first time, we're taking the first round of the competition out to the three main global areas of music making, Europe, the USA, and the Far East, reflecting the three areas from which the vast majority of our competitors are drawn. The European leg will take place in Berlin, taking us right to the heart of Europe and one of its principal music centers. In the USA, we'll hold the first round in New York, and the Far Eastern leg will be held in Singapore. And crucially, this first round will take place in April 2018, five months ahead of the main body of the competition, instead of immediately preceding it, as has always been the case. This enables us to take the leads out to the world, to spread the word of the leads with the intention of bringing audiences back to Leeds for the competition itself. 60 competitors will take part in that first round, from which 24 will be invited to come to take part in the main body of the competition in Leeds, which will take place from the 6th to the 15th of September 2018, with three rounds. 24 pianists in the first round, which is a solo round, 10 in the semi-finals, and five in the concerto round, which is the finals, at which three main prizes will be awarded. But we also believe that we can harness digital technology to be even more outward looking. And in order to reach a wide, as wide a global audience as possible, we're going to stream all the rounds of the competition in a new partnership with Medici TV. This will be free to view and across a wide variety of platforms. The first round will be filmed in Berlin, New York, and Singapore, and then put up for view about a month before the main competition. And all rounds of the main competition will then be live streamed. Just, just to give you a sort of indication of the potential audience that we might reach. In 2015, when Medici streamed the Tchaikovsky competition, they had over 10 million hits, and over 2 million unique users. They reached 190 countries and 13,500 cities. Now, this is exponentially, probably a far larger audience than has actually ever been reached by the Leeds, probably in its 50-year history. It's enormous. We will also embrace digital technology to have an audience prize, which we voted for online. And we are also really delighted that the BBC, our trusted partners since 1966, when John Drummond first made his Leeds programme. The BBC will again be covering the semi-finals and finals, and details of that will be announced in due course. Most importantly, as Paul said, we want to make the prize a really meaningful one to the competitors. As with most competitions, top places will come with generous cash prizes and status, but we want to take it much further and create a new style prize package which will help those exceptional young artists to develop long-term careers with appropriate support. To achieve this, We've entered into some very significant partnerships with a number of world-renowned music institutions, all of whom have committed their support to our new vision. Askenas Holt, one of the world's leading artist management agencies, proposes for the first time to offer management to one of the prize winners in 2018. BBC Radio 3, in addition to broadcasting the semi-finals and finals, has greatly enhanced its existing partnership by offering concert and recording opportunities to the winner. 
And in a new partnership, the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra will invite the winner to perform a concerto in the week immediately following the finals in the orchestra's first opening concert of the season at Philharmonic Hall with its chief conductor, Vasily Petrenko. We've also struck up a new partnership with London's South Bank Centre and a much enhanced one with Wigmore Hall, which will result in recital opportunities for the winners in the years following the competition. In May 2018, in another first, we'll be mounting a Leeds Piano Festival to be held both in Leeds and here at Wigmore Hall, involving past alumni and winners, as well as other performers associated with the Leeds. This will help us maintain and build awareness among the audience leading up to the 2018 competition. The winner will also be given the opportunity to make a debut CD recording with the Champs Hill label. And very crucially, the winners will be offered personal mentoring, not only from Paul Lewis, but other international pianists as well. And last but not least, our ongoing and valued partnership with the Halle Orchestra will result in them not only playing for the finals, but also offering concerto ex experiences and appearances for the winners. All in all, we strongly believe that these elements constitute a unique and totally innovative prize package, unmatched by any other music competition today. And one that aims to ensure that the best young artists have the opportunities, support, and advice to develop significant long-term careers. To make the competition experience as sympathetic as possible, given the tensions that are absolutely inevitable in any competition, we will make sure that the participants are all housed together on the campus of Leeds University, where they'll also be fed, watered, and let's say, cherished. <laughs> they will all have access to good pianos, many of them in the homes of our wonderful team of volunteers and friends. As in past competitions, we will be renewing our important partnership with Steinway, who not only provide the pianos for the competition, but tune and service them as well. To extend the competition experience both for the musicians as well as audiences, we will be devoting each morning during the competition to masterclasses, talks, discussions, films, and other activities. These will involve some of the musicians who don't get through the early rounds, but who will all stay on in Leeds to participate in masterclasses and other activities, as well as being involved in some education work in and around Leeds. We'd like the repertoire to be as unrestricted as possible. And we want to ask the semi-finalists to offer two different recital programs and also to write 500 words to articulate their thinking. When you have the entire piano repertoire at your disposal, the possibilities for creative programming are endless. And we want to encourage young pianists to take full advantage of that. We're also introducing a chamber music round, which should be an essential element of any competition in the 21st century. As far as our jury is concerned, we want to make Leeds as transparent as humanly possible. Our jury, which I will chair, will be performer-led and truly international in its scope. Pianists Imogen Cooper, Lars Vogt, and Simon Trubczewski, violinist Henning Kragerud and composer pianist Thomas Lacher have already agreed to join us. Some competitions publish all the jury's marks to ensure transparency. We may well do the same. Last but not least, we want to have a powerful and inspiring learning and participation program that will reach out not only to the local communities, but also to a much wider section of society both on a national and an international level. When I was growing up, the piano as an instrument was a dominant feature in many homes and households, as indeed it had been through most of the 20th century. But with the decline of free instrumental teaching and availability of instruments, this has fallen behind in recent times. 
but there are still countless people out there for whom the piano was and is their first way into classical music. And we'd like to find ways of tapping into that. So we'll be working on a local level with the Leeds City Council, Leeds University, as well as local schools, hospitals, care homes, prisons maybe. But we'll also be looking to harness latest digital technologies to bring that message to a wider audience, perhaps through a National Piano Day here in the UK, and also to reach out to a global audience through online masterclasses and workshops and other initiatives that we're thinking about. Now, when Paul and I started thinking about all this just over a year ago, our first thought was, how do we build on that extraordinary legacy of Dame Fanny Waterman, who pioneered and guided this competition for 55 years? Our challenge is how to make it meaningful to a swiftly changing environment. Now, alongside the purely musical aspects, which still remain absolutely central and paramount to our vision, we nonetheless, we have to be far more connected to our audience in all sorts of ways. Presentation, communication, talking about music, going into local schools to play to the kids, and more besides. This is hugely important. We have to reach out. And we both sincerely hope that our plans for the Leeds will reflect both to the participants and the audience what it means to be a musician in the 21st century. But all of this is in the future. Back to the present. And to show that this is a truly continually evolving process, we're lucky that Anna Tsibulova, the wonderful winner of the 2015 Leeds International Piano Competition, is with us here today just to play a short recital. So, without further ado, to play Scarlatti's Sonate Pastorale and Saint-Saëns' delicious bon bouche Étude en forme de valse, please welcome Anna Tsibulova.